Hi, I'm Tio. Welcome to another video on this channel. I usually try to come up with the humor for the video on my own. Raid Shadow Legends. The one thing that is harder to avoid than your responsibilities. But I think today's video is going to provide plenty of humor by itself. I'm talking about the Oblivion NPC dialogue memes. I did not really know who you were. I thought you was a thug. While Oblivion has a huge amount of issues and oversights that make for funny moments, this is the unintended consequence that is most recognizable. If half of the content in the game is equally as good as the other half is bad, you'd be left with the uh, most likely mediocre and forgettable experience. But when a high percentage of the bad part is so bad it's good, it'll give the game a certain je ne sais quoi that'll make it stick out in your memory, just like it does for so many people. And I'm sure if you've been on the internet, even if you haven't played the game, you've seen one of the videos that I'm talking about. I love dogs. Doesn't everyone? Bye. <laughs> What? A bit of background on the game that started it all. The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, well really it's The Elder Scrolls 3 because nobody really talks about The Elder Scrolls Arena. Oblivion is a game that was bestowed upon us by our beloved, honest and earnest Todd Howard and Bethesda in the spring of 2006. Considering the acclaim of its predecessor Morrowind and Todd's sweet talk, it, it was highly anticipated and extremely promising. It garnered a huge fan base which would carry Bethesda into the colossal success that was The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Hey, you. Say what you will about the game, but it was so popular the company managed to resell it to the fan base multiple times. But back to today's topic, Oblivion has many objective issues surrounding collision pathfinding and combat and level scaling but it is remembered fondly by most people including myself so why is that oblivion's fan base reduced like a delicious sauce i want to make applesauce while some of it dwindled with time or moved on to skyrim the people that stayed have a deep appreciation for the good parts and are able to laugh at the bad ones The events that created the perfect storm that turned those would have been bad moments into so bad they were good are in my opinion as follows. Bethesda's over ambitious idea for a living, breathing world where NPCs have schedules and interact with each other. I don't know you and I don't care to know you. I don't know you and Let's I don't it. care to know you. Instead of them being a sea of uh, overly excited salespeople trying to approach you. People rest. People fight. Watch out. People breathe. People live. If you commit a crime, you incur the wrath of the Imperial soldier. Stop right there, criminal scum. Or the guard of the town that you're in at that moment. Stop. If you achieve greatness, people find out and they express their admirations, some more than others. There are homeless people who come up to you and beg you for help. Me children will thank you for your help. Before dropping the act and going about searching for the next victim. Thank you, kind sir. And the last example ties in beautifully with another event and reason. They used a limited number of voice actors to read the lines. How goes it? I've been better. I hope things get better. Bye. And in many cases, they didn't even give him enough context for them. What do you want, you? What do you want, you, you rat? When you set out to create a massive open world RPG with a ton of people from different places, with different ambitions, different voices, you're setting yourself up for a lot of work or some resourceful usage of your current assets being the lines that your voice actors provided you. That's why the beggars of the city seem like paid actors who are too bored to keep up the facade, or why some NPCs introduce themselves in a line and talk about themselves in the third person in another. I'm Amantius Electus, the writer. Amantius Electus was killed during a burglary. 
they say the house was ransacked. As a side note, here's my lore pitch that also explains why this happens. Our boy Todd Howard doesn't make mistakes, okay? I think that the beggars in Cyrodiil are actors paid by the Empire. We have no Emperor and no heir. I suppose we should all be worried. I just don't think about it. The Elder Council will take care of things. A coin for an old beggar? They give the average citizen of the province a sense of superiority and knowing that it could always be worse. This prevents more unrest within the population at a time when the Emperor has been assassinated. This is where my journey ends. And Daedra are literally knocking on the front door of the city. But speculations aside, the voice actor issue is why some lines sound overly aggressive while others sound phoned in. They heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. The way some Hollywood actors do later on in their careers. Who is this? The tone of the legendary lines delivered by the Imperial Guards when you've committed a crime. Stop right there, criminal scum! would be quite appropriate after murdering someone in broad daylight in the town square. But when you've accidentally started picking the lock of a door at 7.59 in the morning... No, 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 wait, 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 stop! Because Thorin isn't quite ready for you to unload all of your garbage onto him. Can I carry your weapon? Shine your boots! It's not as fitting. Not to forget honorable mentions like NPC omniscience and teleportation. Stop! Unwavering determination for them to talk to you, dialogue locking you in space. It's all over, lawbreaker. But not time. Then pay with your blood. Uh, really... And the zoom in onto their overly expressive faces. You donkey! So well done. Okay. All of these reasons and more work together to create a classic that's certainly not devoid of strengths, but shines because of its weaknesses. Think The Room, a movie that intended of being a serious drama, but because of the people involved and its circumstances, it became a cult classic comedy. And since I mentioned Oblivion's strengths, I will say that the Dark Brotherhood questline is one of my favorite, and it gave me a little idea for my channel, which I'll announce in the next video. The best example of Oblivion's fans, their humor, and what the game means to them is a channel by the name of, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, Lefav Brothers. If you don't recognize the name, you'll probably recognize their faces from clips like these. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. With on-point impersonations down to the, the timing, the imprecise collision and the amazing ragdoll, it's easy to see how these videos became so popular even outside of fans of the genre. On their channel, Emmett and Max have long-standing playthroughs of titles of the Elder Scrolls series alongside other games in which they capture their essence the way they did with Oblivion. The ending of one of their last videos is a great example of why their content is genuine and such a comfort for many people. Other than the game itself, I would credit these guys with the creation of the beloved memes that we've watched and laughed at so far. My favorite purveyor of just pure oblivion jank is bacon underscore. My videos can compare with the work that went into creating oblivion. They are about as unpolished as the game, but I hope you guys still find humor in them the way people did with this entertainment well and art piece of a game. Comment below with your favorite oblivion memes. I'd love to see some more. But for now, talk's over, to you out.